Hello and welcome PML fans. I am your admin, Joe Zamora here, and I have our analyst, Stuart and Jaden. Say hello guys. Yo, 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 yo. G'day everyone. They are gonna introduce the Galar region as they did the Kanto region last video. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and hopefully y'all approve of their scores for this division and we will see you guys at the end of the video with the totals for both divisions and of course by region joe means division which he corrects himself at the end there but that's fine i'm not a virgin i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> you said region kill our region oh are we gonna be talking about that yeah. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. All right. Cool, cool. So, take it away, Jaden. All right. So, well, first off, in the Galar division, we have, I think, easily the best named team in all over both divisions. It's the Wiki Watchy Wishy Washies. And I am, it is a, a limerick, and I am here for it. I want to give it tens across the board just straight away, like it's out there. Who does well, that? Look? Um, who, but who do, who well, does actually, it? we'll do a proper analyst analyst job on it. Uh, just based on the name, I want to give it tens. But this is what their team is, and their team is also very good with uh, Rillaboom, Kingdra, Rotom Heat, Politoed, Zatsu, Wishy Washy, the mascot, Rhyperia, Lipard, Cabotops, and Snorlax. Nice. This is a very solid team. Just like initially, initial thoughts, it is a great great team like, it, it, it just see like on face value it just seems to work together nicely so um, how do you feel about it? it's um it's uh bulk. what's up with bulk eh? it's bulk. Bulk. keep it consistent so the bulk i think is i think the bulk is fantastic like you look at pokemon like rillaboom rotom heat uh rhyperia and snorlax those four pokemon will be able to like they, they cover off on a lot of different um, type advantages and disadvantages. Um, I think if you look at um, Rillaboom, you can, Rillaboom can run an Assault Vest set really, really well. I think um, meta for Rillaboom is Assault Vest life or, or Life Orb, but then you can run interchangeably between the two. Like, and those are both fantastic options for Rillaboom. Um, it's, all, it's all around a great Pokemon. Um, Snorlax will eat, things, eat both special and physical attacks for days. Um, and I mean, there's a little bit. It might be a bit of a a weakness to fighting types, but they've also got Zatu there. To, if you've got Zatu there for a to predict a, a fighting type attack, it's four, it four times resists those fighting attacks. So I don't really see much of an issue with bulk. No, I, mean, I agree with that. Um, like there's nothing there that's just a straight out bulky Pokemon. Like there's no you know, chance here or anything. So everything can be used offensively as well, which is always handy. Um, don't sleep on Cursed Snorlax. That's always going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Right, area. You know? Even yeah. when she is relatively bulky, right? Yeah, so, I think in um, some good sets, with the, again, with an Assault Vest uh, being run bulky, and I've had some issues with it. Um, but, on, but to be honest, I, I'm, I've never really had too many problems with Fishy Washy. I've, I've had problems with with some sets, but not Wishy washy as a, as a general thing, as a general yeah, arm. Agreed. So, what did you give it for bulk there, Jaden? I gave it a nine. I think, it, you know, touch it, like going back, sort of um, an unashamed plug to the last video. I think um, it does, what it does is that they've got those, instead of those three Pokemon that, um, instead of the three Pokemon that I always say, like, you need three good defensive bulky Pokemon, or three good bulky Pokemon in, in any draft team, they've got four, and they've got four excellent bulky Pokemon, or, or Pokemon that have the potential to be bulky. So I, I would give it a nine for bulk. Right, I gave it an eight. Um, pretty much for the same reason you said, but I also appreciate the physical, I mean, the uh, offensive capabilities of the defensive Pokemon, which is always a bonus. Yeah. So um, what about the speed tiers there? How do you feel about them? 
I, again, I think the speed tiers are, are, are fantastic. Um, you know, Rillaboom has priority gra- with the Grass Glide priority. Um, again, with the, with the Life Warp capability, it, it just it will it will move faster than anything else, um, and, and it will it will get those revenge kills. It'll do nice chip on anything um, that doesn't resist the Grass attack. Um, he's got two. He's got access to two very good Swiss swimmers in both Kindra and. Ka- Kabutops, or Kabutops, they um they both, well, once Kingdra's special, Kabutops is physical. You like, um, generally, yeah. Well, generally, yeah, you can run Kingdra physically, um, but it just depends on like this. What this says to me is like you can look at this team and you can say, okay, well, I can pick Kabutops this week, or I can pick Kingdra this week, or I can pick both. Um, just depending on what you need. Like, if you want something, if you think, like, if this, this person thinks, if the, the coach thinks that I want um, just to be faster than everything and I'll just punch things down, then bring both. If I if yep. they identify that um, the special side of, like, they need more, uh, they need a faster special Pokemon and they need a bit more both and they can just <laughs> drop Kabatops for this week and they can... Just bring Kingdra, or if they want the Dynamax option, they got Cabotops there, and they can, and they he can go hard with the rocks or the, or the, um, or the water or the Max Geysers or whatever else. It just, there's a lot of options there to play around with, and they, and they, they will always, almost always move first. Yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. Well. Also, um, my part's got Prankster, so that's always handy. Yeah. So, um, it so gives that advantage the as well. Too. Um, not that like, uh, this is sort of more more noteworthy more than I think an actual strategy though um, that Zatu has has that capability but I just don't think it, yeah, I'm not a big fan of using Tailwind in singles I just think it's not quite um, not, not enough turns but Tailwind not to make to make proper use sorry I had the thought and then I sort of trailed off a bit <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens Mm. But for speed, I also gave it a nine. I think I think it's a great, great speed team. Great speedy team. Uh, yes, I gave it a nine as well. Um, can't go wrong with Swiss Swim, right? Almost one of the. It's always better than chlorophyll in some way. Like you, it, well, I always feel like rain teams get their Swiss swimmers in more reliably than chlorophyll teams do. But you never know. It depends on the oh, coach. I so oh. I give it a nine. Because chlorophyll users are, tend to be weaker to weak to the sun that they're supposed to be speedy in, so it's, that's um, also true. Yes, yes, you're right. So they're more of a there's more risk running chlorophyll rather than Swiss swim. So if we move on to that, to the support options of this team, um, I think this is where the there's team nothing... sort of. Oh, you go first. Yeah, oh, I was just going to say there's nothing that screams to me support you know there's no like you've got Zatu that can do a few things and um Rotom Heat can do a few things but unless you're using Lipard's pranks there's nothing that screams to me you know there's no wish or anything like that there's no immediate support mon so yeah I guess if there's any if there's any hole in the team it's that yeah um, I mean, there's other things that they, they've got going good as well. So they've got, um, well, Politoed can set rain. And that's that's the big elephant in the room. That's the Politoed will be the Pokemon that holds this whole operation together because they need that is needed for Kingdra and Kabutops to get those to get that Swift Swim going. Um, Rotom Heat and Lipart, I think, probably fill a, like a similar role. Like they'll, you'll you'll see those two. I, I think um, running a lot of Thunder Waves and generally being um, a nuisance to try and slow down the opposition. Um, whether it'd be better or not to lose either Rotom Heat or Lipard for a Sticky Webs user, um, up for interpretation, I'd, pro- I'd probably suggest so. Uh, maybe, but the, what they do both have is they both have Pivot. So, um, and I mean, Rotom Heat is probably going to be less effective than maybe other Rotom forms um, in the rain, but. Again, that's just, um, I suppose that's just a matter of opinion, right? Yeah, um, I mean, you can always run it, run it scarfed or whatever. You can run, like, dual screens or, you know, there's lots of things it can do. Yeah. It's just, 
it's I don't know, it's, I guess I'm going to call it offensive support. It's a, it's an offensive support mine. It's not a defensive support mine. It's, it's not going to sit there and you know recover health and wish mm. protect and all that other rubbish. Not yeah. every team needs that, obviously. But um, you you can't yeah. fault Rotom Heat as Rotom Heat as a pick. It's just as you no, say, it's Rotom a little bit. I think where I'm more just... my concern with Rotom Heat is that it's Rotom Heat is sitting in a rain team. So exactly, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If you're facing up against any other water type, I mean, you got the electric move there, but yeah, are you going to one shot it? I mean, it'd be up for um, you would need to look at it week by week to see how effective Rome Heat would actually be in long term. But I think just as an out and out um, Pokemon, I think you might struggle a bit if the rain is up and Rome Heat is on the field. Um, that's the only thing I can see with Rome Heat struggling. Um, but aside from yeah. that, I think the support options are generally okay. You've got Rhyperia's Stealth Rock, as you touched on, Lifeheart's Prankster, Rotom Heat, Thunderwave. I think overall it's it's not, not terrible by any means, but it's definitely something that this team is, I think, is lacking a little bit in. Um, but like you said, not every team needs great support monsters, especially if you're punching through things with your sweepers each week. So, so how lacking did you consider it to be? Sorry? How lacking out of 10 did you give it? How lacking out of 10? I gave it a 6. I think it's it's good enough for what it, for the team that needs... I think it's good enough to... So it's, the support is there to do what it needs to do. Um, yeah, so I gave it a 7 it, for pretty much the same reasons, yeah. It does no more and no less than what it needs to do. Perfect. You're right. And if, what about the wall breaking? It's my favourite. So, um, your favourite. I think wall breaking. I love I love this category. I like I love analysing the the breaking potential in any team. It's just it just um, makes me happy. But I think in this in this case, I think there's the setup potential is what drags it up. I think um, I don't know necessarily that. Because you got, you got, the obvious ones from the outset is Rillaboom, Kingdra, um, and Kabutops as your main um, your main sweepers, and you might you, those will be the relying you'll be relying on those three each week every week to bust open the walls. Is it enough? Yeah, maybe. All it, all it really takes is one Storm Drain Pokemon or one Water Absorb Pokemon or just even a, a bulky Water type and. Yeah, you got Rillaboom there to, to help with that situation, but is it enough? I'm not sure. I don't think that. I think he'll like. I think this um this I coach mean, will find. I don't. I think this coach will find that he, I think, might be another option, like another more dynamic option in that um maybe in the wild card slot. Maybe they if they if this is how they so if they take everything to heart. What would we say? Maybe they could drop Snorlax for something else that's out and out attacker that will call oh, about an extra yeah. dynamic to their team. Yeah, it's it's one of those teams where the whole is greater than some of the parts. I don't think you'll see one of the Mons running away with the MVP race unless you know the coach is particularly proficient with Kingdra or something that we don't know about. But um, you know, it's gonna be one of those Mons with one of those teams where the kills are shared around. The works all shit around, um, and wall breaking is maybe you know the first mon might knock on the wall and crack it a little bit, and then the second one will bust through or something like yeah. that. But um, yeah, I gave it an eight. There's better, but there's also worse. Yes, I would agree. Eight is where I put it too. I think it's um, if it was team breaking, then it would score a lot better because I agree. Like it's it's. Mm. It works together nicely as a team to rotate around almost, and just something will break part of like it's all part of the same thing. Like it's just going to rotate around, but um, do some chip here, rotate around, do some chip there. <laughs> um, I mean, there's options there for Kingdra, like you said. Um, the crit draws is crazy strong, um, just consistently getting um, critical hits. That could be enough, um, but also about how you can how your opponents will set up against that and how they'll prepare for that 
And how does that um, bode you for synergy? I would say a nine for synergy. It's really, really good. Um, actually, not, not probably an eight, actually. And uh, the only reason why I dropped it back a little bit was because of my noted issues with the rain, with the rain, um, and road of heat, but also Rhyperia. Um, yeah. Rhyperia is also weak to rain, or not weak to rain, but if you're facing up against another water type Pokemon, you don't really want Rhyperia to be in the rain against it. Um, no, four times a week. <laughs> it's just going to be a bad time. So I think overall, like eight out of those 10 pits that just work so well together. So I think well together, it should be fine-tuned. It should be fine-tuned by having Rotom Heat and Rhyperia just maybe moved around a little bit or maybe just re- there's less reliance on them. Maybe you can pick up something else. Um, yeah. I think there's just, just a bit of... <laughs> There's a bit of wiggle room. Yeah. Like there's, this team is fantastic. I just think there's, it, if with a bit of fine tuning, it's going to be impo- it's going to be impossible to stop them from taking it out. Yeah, I um, yeah, I would drop probably Rhyperia if I had to drop one or the other. If I was going, oh, I've got to get rid of one of my water wheat, I would probably drop Rhyperia for something else. But once again, you know, it's always handy to have a ground type, so can't argue with that really. Mm. Um, I also went eight for synergy, uh, a rain team. It's easy to go overboard, but I think one setter and two abusers is always a good a balance. Um, yep. I mean, Wishy Washy, it's obviously a tier five. It's the mascot pick. It's the extra water type that's probably unnecessary, but you know, it's a tier five and a mascot pick, so can't mark it down. So, yeah, I give it an eight. Wishy Washy's there for a reason. Um, I'd, I'd love to see Wishy Washy get used. I think. Um, I've seen Wishy Washy be used and used effectively, um, but it is tier five for a reason. It is, um, it's sort of limited in how effective it actually is. It's niche. Niche is the word I'd use. Yeah. Any other, any other analysis? <laughs> nope. That, that's all from me. All uh, right. So yeah, that gives me, I got 40 overall for that one. Same, 40. Nice, eat, nice neat, 80 out of 100. 80 boosts and- up to the third spot. All right. Well, we're we'll going nice. to move on to the next team. Which is the Crushing Soul Valley. Which is, uh, is it some I TNG, some one TNG? Apologies to the coach for getting it wrong. Uh, they drafted Excadrill. I Slow King. Some I TNG or some Itting. <laughs> oh, some t- I got it. Excadrill, Slow King, Hexorus. Giglith, Drifblim, Absol, Salazzle, Amoongus, Machamp, and Sylveon. What a team. Start off with the bulk. How are you I'm feeling about still, the bulk, dear Channel? I'm still waiting for my document to load up, so I might have to get you to take away from it. Take it away. For the That's program. right. No problem. So, you know, straight away the obvious uh, defensive mind that I see there is Slow King. You know, it's one of those, it's the Jotonium, the Joto version, so it's very especially bulky. Um, Amoongus, which can go either way, also very bulky. Sylveon can be bulky. Drifflin can be bulky. Gigalith is a rock type, so it's obviously physically bulky. Excadrill is a steel type, so once again, physically bulky. I, I'm pretty, pretty happy with the bulk of this team, to be honest, and I would uh, hazard to say it's going to be tough to break for some teams, so I gave it a nine. Straight out with bulk. I would agree with all that. Um, yeah, not really much to add there, is there? It's just, you look at it and think, gee, how how is anyone going to break that down? you got the double um, Regenerator Core 2, which I think is the only thing you didn't mention. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, no, I didn't even notice that. You're right, I'm going to slow of course, yeah. Which is abs- which will be absolutely impossible. Uh, it'll be almost near on impossible to break down. You got, and I think honestly, it'll be very, very hard. I think um, for bulk, I'll give it a ten. Ten, wow, nice. So we move on to the speed tiers. Um, this for me, I think it, it, it's good. I think the um, as far as the speed goes in this division, I think it's. Uh, Overall, so far, I think it's one of the better teams that we've analysed. 
um, especially because the, the combination between Gigalith and Excadrill can't be understated. Like, it's just a really, really great combination of... Um, it's a really, really great combination. It's really, really... It works together so well. And then you've got teams... And then you've got Pokemon around it that support them, support that two Pokemon core really, really well too. Um, but looking at just its speed, I think it does it does well. Um, it's got Excadrill, Excadrill, which can be fast. Um, you go Haxorus with a Scarf, that, can, that, is, that is pretty quick. Um, and Drifloom with um, Unburden. That's, that's a great little core that you got there with that are very, very fast. But also on the plus yeah. side, you've got Slow King, Amongus, well, Slow King and Amongus, just those, just those two, they're very good on a Trick Room. So if, if you're facing a team that has that spans Trick Room, you, you're pretty well covered in that regard too. You just I, set it, the IVs a little bit lower and you're good to go on a Trick Room too. Or you can just set your own Trick Room to Slow King um, and just go for, go that way. So I think it, this, you know, the speed is also very, very good on this one. Yes. I think it's a very good spread, as you mentioned. I mean, Salazzle's very fast, naturally. Haxorus, you know, was a base 97, so not up to a Dragon Dance, it'll be, you know, a way laughing. Um, Excadrill went under Sand. Absol is quite fast as well. Um, and then you've got your middle middle sort of tier ones, like Sylvia and Machamp, that will fill in that middle role of... Uh, Speed tiers. So uh, I went with a, I think I went with an eight. Did I just check? Yes, I went with an eight for speed. Yeah, no, I'm going to lock in with a nine. And I think that, I think something, uh, just want to pause for a second and just sort of mention, like, the reason why I've given a nine for this team, as well as the, pre- as, um, the previous team, is that they're both very, very fast, but in different regards. So the previous team had, like, it has, it has an exceptional range speed. This team has really, really good spread. So they both they're both far, they're both very strong in the speed categories, but under different reasons. Yeah, that's a very good point. So we'll move on to the support, the crushing Silvali. The support, I think, is I think is good. I think again, it's really, really good. Um, you've got. Um, Oh, hang on. We got so you got um, Gigalith with this Stealth Rocks. You got Salazzle with um, Guaranteed Poisons. Uh, Sylveon Wish Protecting. Sylveon providing Heal Bell support on particularly Excadrill um, and Haxorus. They're both the, those will be the main physical attackers in the team. Um, Among Us with um, Spores will provide will be really really useful. So I think. Yeah, you know, he's got they've got some good options in there. So for for bulk oh, sorry, bulk. I uh, for support I'd give it an eight. Yep, I went with eight with support as well. There's just so many um different options available for the team and between Sylveon and Amoongus alone they cover a lot of bases and then you add in Sloking and it's almost like a bonus. So um you can almost afford to run Sylveon offensively if you didn't need it switch protect because you um have your regenerator core doing the healing up between um, switching in and out. So, yeah, I gave it an eight for support. Excellent. And um, now we move on to wall breaking. wall breaking. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. How do you feel about the wall breaking? I think it. It's um. This is the this category is the one where it's sort of lacking the most. Um, and the reason I say that. And it might be a little bit controversial, but if you look at wall breakers are, you'll see that they're all physical. The Excadrill, um, Haxorus, potentially Gigalith if it's on Dynamax, and Sork, and maybe Salazzle on the Dynamax as well. Um, so Salazzle is the only real special attacking option in the um, in this team, and it's particularly ground weak. Um, so I think for me, this team gets a seven for wall breaking. It's a, it's, the Pokemon they've got are, are excellent, but I think if you're just, just one burn away from being crippled on most of your wall breakers. Yes. And yes, yes, which is... and yes, Sylveon can run 
heal bell, which can cure those burns, but that it still disrupts your wall breaking potential. Yeah, I was going to say that they, if you're running heal bell, that's one less coverage move, or you can't run protect or a particular status move on Sylvie on that week. So, or even um, at, the, at the very least, even it's one less move in the sand. So you could have Gigalith running the, the smooth, um, the smooth rocket um, to get those bonus sand turns, but you switch out Escadrill because it's burned. He's bringing Sylvie on. That's one turn of sand gone. You use Heal Bell. That's the second turn gone. You switch back in Escadrill. That's three turns of sand. You just it's just it's just wasted. Wasted. You know, you're, yeah. not, you're not getting enough efficiency out of the um, out of the sand to make it really powerful. You know, I think that makes it particularly. I think it makes it particularly um, susceptible to being exploited. Like the burns are a massive problem for this team. Yes, there's answers to it certainly, but. In terms of just pure wall breaking, I think that that's where this team struggles just that little bit. Yeah, I agree. I went with a seven for the same reason. Feels weird to say on a team that has Excadrill and Hexorus in it, but um, oh, it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's it's you're right. It's physically heavy, which is okay, but um, I don't know. I just feel like picking the six mons every week is going to be be hard. Do you bring a sand core every week? Do you bring Choice Scarf, Mold Breaker, X Control, and just not worry about the sand? I mean, there are a few options out there, but uh, as you say, out and out wall breakers. I mean, Driftland could be. Like, I've had problems yeah. with them in the past, but I don't know. These these games are, are different to the ones we sort of participate in because you see the stats each week because they're published. And now we go on to they'll the synergy to round up, round up the team. Back. I'll go back through two, three sets, and I'll see what are you dynamaxing each and every week. Yep. Um, so yeah, I think I think this team, this is where it struggles a, a, that little bit. <clears throat> but synergy, yeah, I think. Move on. Yeah, yeah. moving on. Yeah, um, synergy, I think is great. I think the synergy that they've got is good. Um, you know, they've got they've got the natural double regenerator core, like I mentioned. Uh, Excadrill and Gigalith are fantastic together. It's a match made in heaven. Um, they've got they've got answers for their weaknesses. So they've got the burns that are, are addressed by Sylveon with the heal bell, but also Sylveon's weakness to fire to the poison and steel. They're they're answered. Um, you got Excadrill, which can come in on a poison type. <clears throat> you got again, so you got Salazzle coming in on a poison type. Um, steel types, you can go into slow king. Um, so there's enough coverage in there to be able to make it work, and there's enough coverage in there to be able to avoid a lot of problems. Um, so I think for synergy, I'd give it an eight. And synergy, I ended with an eight as well. Um, yeah, you covered every base that I was going to cover. I have nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to come up with something because people are going to think it would be colluded. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, sand core strong, defensive core strong, you've got a strong dragon type, um, you know, probably my favourite fairy type. Um, you've got your cores yeah, there. Yeah. Moongus is fantastic. Uh, can't argue with it. So, yeah, Synergy is an 8. So I gave it 24... 31, 40 overall again, two in a row. I gave it 44. Well, good. 10 plus 9 is 19, plus 8 is 27, plus 7 is 34, plus 8 is 42. Sorry, I'm not good at counting. So 80. 40. It's okay. So, so 40 plus 44. No, 42. Okay, so 80, I mean 40 plus 42 is 82. That's 82 one of out of 100. That's right. In the league, it's still a, it is a great team. It is a great team, and I think with a little bit of fine again, with a little bit of fine tuning, this is, this will be another one of those teams to watch where they should be making finals and should be doing quite well for themselves. And uh, doing quite well, exactly, especially in this, especially in this division, especially in this division. Oh yeah, yeah. And, and then most people need to know that Hacksaw is kind of broken, and it's in tier two, so that that's like a really um, what do you call it? Prestigious tier two mind is picked up. Great dragon. Oh, great <clears throat> dragon. 
Oh, uh, oh, right. Only two times a week to Barry, and it still deals out a really hard a physical attack. All right. Well, we're All on right. to Memphis Munchlax now. Oh, sorry, Memphis Munchlax or Memphis Maniacs? All right. So the next team we've got is the Memphis Maniacs. And they have drafted Dracovich. It's, it's the Memphis Munchlax. Oh, Memphis Munchlax. The Memphis Post Maniacs. Sorry. <laughs> um, I get this wrong all the time. Um, I look at the coaches' names and then I don't look at the actual team names. So we've got the, um, the Memphis Munchlax and they drafted Dracovich, Blissey, Umbreon, Obstagoon, Delmise, Quagsire, Cantonian Ninetales, Morwild, mm. Santa Scorched, and Tyranitar. And how are you feeling about this team, Stu? Yeah, I look, it looks, it's pretty bulky to me. I mean, any team with Blissey or Umbreon in it alone are going to be a problem, but let alone both of them. The thing is, though, it's a 20-minute timer league, so do you want both of those mons just sitting there being bulky? I don't know. And yeah, then Craig's eye, think... too, by the way. And then... Yeah, well, exactly. Like, the... You'd... It, it, is it bulky for the sake of being bulky or is it actually going to provide some good efficiencies? I just don't think that... Like, you look at other teams in this in this draft and you think, well, they're bulky, yes, but they can actually. there's actually good reasons for that bulk. Like they actually provide some kind of offensive support as well um, or they actually provide some kind of push. So I think there's no two ways about it. This team's bulky. There's no, way, no other way to cut it. The issue I have with the with the bulk is that it has um, a pretty significant fighting weakness, and that, that's addressed by Delmise. But and it's also um, I mean, you can't bring Delmise every week. Yeah, you can't bring Delmise every week, and but also you got more wild there as well. But is that again? Is that the most effective way to counter a fighting attack when fighting type moves are just so common? So I would say probably not. Um, just because there is such a significant fighting weakness with Blissey, Umbreon, Tyranitar and Obstagoon being pretty weak to fighting. Um, yeah, I, don't, I had no problems giving this team a ninth bulk, but um, as we'll talk about in the later categories, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> agreed. Um, no two ways to cut it. Nine is, it is, a, it, nine is the right right score for bulk. It is incredibly bulky, but I think those other components of um, what I spoke about are more relevant to other um, other grades. Um, how do you think about speed? So you gave it a nine as well? Yeah, nine as well for bulk. Hmm. Speed, I only gave a seven solely because there's nothing that's out and out blistering pace. Nine tails is the only one that you know, you look at and go, well, you're fast. Everything else is under base 100, quite considerably. Well, Dragovich can be fast. Um, it can be, but, you know, it needs that sand, blah, blah, blah. But there's nothing that goes, oh, I'm really, really fast. Obstagoon is frustratingly slow. As someone who's used Obstagoon quite a lot recently, you know, it's that speed here where if it was base 100, it would do so well. But those few points under 100, it's just enough for it to be frustratingly slow. And when you yeah. need it to outspeed opponents, it just doesn't. Yeah. And it's not even really helped by, like, there's no sticky web user. There's no, well, I mean, Blissey has Thunder Wave. But is, again, is Blissey really the best Thunder Wave user to be using? Um, I, I just really feel like it, it's just missing that certain element. Um, you know, I think um, overall, I think I gave it. I gave it a six in speed. Um, Dracovish can be quick. Obstagoon, yeah, as you mentioned, frustratingly slow for a wall breaker. Um, Tyranitar can be quick with a cho- can be quick with a choice scarf. You wouldn't want to be ob- you wouldn't want to be choice scarfing Obstagoon, that's for sure. Um, and the others are sort of in that middle tier. Um, I mean, aside from Nine Tails, which is not too bad in speed. Um, as for support, my I think support options are not too bad. Um, where I think, and this is probably, again might be relevant more to synergy, 
Um, but I don't particularly like the Cantonian Nine Tails and Tyranitar being in the same team. And I think it's just, it just causes a bit of confusion in the in the team's, I suppose, makeup. Um, not, no one really takes advantage of the Sun if they, if you wanted to bring Sun. Um, Flash Fight could be used to help keep um, Burns away from, you know, Dracovish and, I mean, obviously going wants to, wants to be burnt. But um, Dracovish and Tyranitar could be helped by Nine Tails and the Flash Fire. And that could be um, more, it could be an answer to the will that come and, and provide more firepower on the way back. So that could be an answer. That could be a, um, something that, that this person's looking at for their team. I, I just, I'm not entirely sure that I agree with this uh, as a setup though. Um, other yeah. yeah, there are a lot of support options. I gave an eight because you know Blissey and Umbreon together, as I said, alone they'd be annoying. Together, they're you know very very fat. They have a shared weakness, which is a, a blessing to the opponents. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, as you say, the nine tails are a little bit redundant, both in piping and in weather. So. Yeah, well, especially when Center Scorch also has Flash Fire. Maybe, like, the special physical options uh, something that they consider. Um, yeah. But also, but you know, Umbreon and Blissey also get good uh, recovery options and have good um, wish-passing. Well, Umbreon has good wish-passing ability as well, so that also could be an option for them. So I gave them a 7 for support. All right, so it moves on to wall breaking. How do you feel about that one? It's... Not bad, but it could be better. And I think, um, I think the issue I have with it is that it can be your Pokemon. Your, your, your wall break is a largely physical attackers. So, I mean, Tyranitar can be run special in a pinch, but do you, do you really want to? Um, well, I think my issue mainly stems from the fact that Dracovish, if you're running it in this as a um, sand rush Pokemon it's going to be target for burns. And yes, you can heal those burns with um, Blissey and Umbreon with Heal Bell, but every turn you're not um, in the sand, you're going to have, um, like, like I said with one of the, one of the previous um, teams, every, t- every turn you're not in the sand is not, the, it's not being used yeah, to... Yeah, you're not attacking, war- yeah. You're not, you're not wall breaking with them. So, Try yeah, maybe maybe you can switch into Nine Tails, and that could be a better answer to what that other team had. But I think overall, the seven is probably still the way to go. Yeah, I landed on the seven for the same reasons. There's just not enough, you know. There's just not mm. enough. Yeah, I agree. I think it needs a little a little bit more. I mean, Center Scorch could be um, Dynamax, and it also has access to Coil, so maybe that could. That could really, you know, hold things together for it, um, and it doesn't get burnt. So that that could be the way, could be its way in. Um, but I think it needs to be rethought. And yes, that, that sort of really goes, that, leans into the synergy. That's a good segue into synergy. I think this yeah. team needs to, you actually want to achieve here, and how are you going to achieve it? Um, I think you know. Obstagoon and Center Scorch are very good contenders for Max Pokemon. So, being able to support them and provide those opportunities for it to for them to Dynamax and break down your your opponents is probably going to be the key here. Um, yes, Drake. No, I, I agree with that. I think Drake mm-hmm. is great, but without the ability to Dynamax on it, I think it's probably. I, I, everyone knows what Drake does. It just comes in, and clicks, vicious friend, and but most. Most people today <laughs> run a bulky water type, and particularly in drafts. Like I run a predominantly sun team, but I always have Cradilly or some other storm drain user to take in those water attacks and dish it back. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. I just think that um, having your fairy dream steel for you know you've got Marwile as two of those. And it's not that great a Pokemon, so I don't know if there's better Fury or Steel options out there. But I've been looking at my three, well, um, three, three picks if I was this coach, and seeing what I could do with them. 
Because individually, those three mines aren't terrible. You know, you, you can only pick tiers three to five in the three picks, so it could be a lot worse. But um, two of them are fire types, and you've got, you know, a slow fairy steel <clears throat> with intimidate, etc. Yeah. So, I don't know. There's options out there, but I feel like the synergy is imperfect, which has resulted in me giving a seven. And what was your overall score? 38. And I gave the 35. For a total score of... Joe, how, what's the total score of that one, mate? Is 73? Uh, 30 and 35. That is... 33. 35 and 38. I believe that's 73. 73. Excellent. My math is on. Not particularly good with numbers, so. <laughs> that brings us to the McKesney Park Slowpokes, coached by A Prater 54. And they drafted Nagamadel, Scizor, Melodic, Slowpuff, Sableye, Colossal, Simeon, Sigalif, Serena, and Silvali. Hey, Joe, how do you feel hey, about being the opposite side of the draft on this guy? Uh, I am pretty <laughs> proud because he has a fire. Fairy Dragon Spell Court, and I do not want to battle against that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, from the outset, feel about the bulk, Shannon? I think the bulk is not too bad, hey? Like, it's... um, I, I think when you look at this team, like, from, like, a... You know, just on its face value only, it, it doesn't particularly... It doesn't strike you as a very bulky team, but then when as soon as you start looking into the, the little elements, I think you start seeing that where the bulk is. So, Naganadel... Has has bulk. It's not run, it's not a particularly bulky Pokemon. But it has a good good amount of bulk. Um, Sizzle can be run bulky. Milotic is bulky as hell. Um, but as well as um, Sableye and Colossal, those the, th- the three big ones are Milotic, Sableye, Colossal, um, and Sigilith can be deceptively bulky with, with the right set. Um, yeah, like an annoying psycho burst. What have psycho shifts set? Yeah, psycho How shift. annoying. Yeah, you run if you run a flame orb and psycho shift, you you cripple things down. You run cosmic power. Oh, I used to run cosmic power, roost, psycho shift, and stored power, and won me quite a few games. Um, so I was very happy with that combination. Um, my opponents were not. <laughs> that, um, and, um, that's pretty. Good. That's. It's a pity. It's a bit sl- slower than Spoobat. <laughs> it's a what? It's a slower Spoobat. I said, it's, I said, it, pity. It's a bit slower than Spoobat. Yeah, I wish it was a bit quicker. But, but, um, but yeah, you're right about the bulk. The um, you're the fit. Yeah, well, yeah, I put I put down an A for the bulk, and the only other thing I wanted to raise was that Silvella can be any type, so it can be a good bulky option for any kind of threat that's coming in it, coming in off any uh, other team. <laughs> So, if it's if you're feeling particularly vulnerable to say a fairy type, you could run an, an extra an additional steel type or a poison type um, to to counter it. So, it, there's options there in that Silver Valley to be able to be anything it wants to be. So I, I gave it an eight. Yeah, yeah, I gave an eight as well. Um, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say Naganadel has bonk before, but um, other than that, we've got Sizzle and Melodic. Great combination together. Save a light, one of my personal favourites. Um, Serena can do Serena things, stop that priority. And as you say, Silvali can be any type. So if you want to be a bulky water, you can be a bulky water. If you want to be a fast electric, you can be a fast electric. So there's plenty of options there as far as bulk concerned. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. So I've had, had, you... had a bit of trouble with. I've always had a bit of trouble trying to break down the Ganadel. I'm just looking at its stats now. It's, yeah, they're pretty They're pretty terrible. 73s, except for special attack and speed. Glass. So, yeah. Maybe it's just, maybe just goes to show, maybe just goes to show that how, how shit a battler I am. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about the um, speed tiers? Speed tiers? Other than, I now think, we've talked about the Ganadel. I think the speed tiers are actually pretty good. Because um, if you... Consider things like the Ganadel, Slurpuff, and Colossal. Are the, I think, again, the third of the three main speedy Pokemon, or the, at least the potential to be speedy. So, Naganadel is fast in and of itself. 
slurp up with the unburden boosts. Um, obviously, doubles in speed and has that. If you use belly drum, it's going to be you know plus six, and before you know it, you're in a very bad spot. Um, and Colossal needs that um, fire support or in fire or water attack to hit it. You prefer the fire one because water's not going to be very friendly. But I think this what this team does well. And this again might be synergy that I'm talking about, but it's relevant here too. Is that it can Colossal will draw in those or Sizzle will draw in the, the necessary fire attacks for Colossal to take advantage of. It might not yeah. be every week, but it will. It, but there'll be like two or three coaches out there that will just fall for that. And then you got the weakness policy shenanigans, and you can Dynamax on it, and you have a lot of trouble. Um, so speed, I gave it a eight. Speed, I went with a eight as well for all your previous mentions. Plus, um, yeah, you know, they've got lots, lots of scarf options. I think as well. You know, scarf Simeon and you know, scarf yeah. Serenos and uh, scarf Silvali. So you know, plenty of options. Yeah. I think Pacific so is good you... as well for Dynamax too. Yeah. So if you got a max airstream off, yeah. you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Run that aerial ace or that, that uh, acrobatics. Nice. Yep. Nice. Um, so how do you feel about support? I think the support options are, yeah, they're pretty good. Um, you know, Sable like Frank, so you can't look past it. Um, it can do... It can patch so many like perceived issues. So, um, one of my favourite things to do at the moment with the prankster Pokemon is run lagging tail and just yeah. stop a fast Pokemon dead in its tracks. And just trick it away. Just, just trick it away. Um, you know, you've got access to priority burns, priority thunder waves. Um, it's um, that Sableye will be the main option for the support in this team, but it's. There's also other options in there as well. So, um, Melodic can provide, also provide burns. It's a little less reliably than Sableye, I would say, um, with the Scolds, but you know, Scoldy gets good shit. Um, access to Toxic as well. Um, can also run a, a really, um, I'm not sure how good this is in singles, how good, but I've got because I got rolled white and doubles, but, um, Running a coil hypnosis set could also be an option to increase this, the accuracy of of hypnosis, put your opponent to sleep, and then finish setting up your physical attack, and then just waterfalling or you know running a physical set on melodic. So yeah, that one's a little bit left field, and I feel like that's a little less likely. <laughs> yes, I think so. But, but it was it's actually... something that, it's something of note that I've seen before, and. It worked quite effectively because I wasn't aware of that even being a yeah. thing. Um, so I think. I mean, you um, might see you might see a competitive melodic of nothing else. You won't see that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, okay. yeah, I gave it. I gave it sevens for support. You know, as you say, lots of little options. There's no like real wish protect or anything like that. So. That's probably the only reason why I didn't give it any higher. Sir Puff has webs, which could be helpful. Yeah, I gave it an eight. Um, maybe that's a generous eight. Um, but I like the um, the stealth rock support on Colossal, and I like the um, the guaranteed burns that Siglyph could provide if you've run a, a psycho shift set. Um, maybe these are more like niche sets um, that, I'm, that I'm sort of scouting out, but I think that's what. That's what happens in draft leagues. You come up with very niche sets that are designed to just take down one team. And I think that's the great thing about drafts. Yeah, Jaden, I think you should have right. scarred from that uh, Milo kick uh, Zach brought against you in doubles. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm a bit scarred. Thanks, Zach. You asshole. <laughs> <laughs> so what about the wall-breaking potential of this team? Um, I think this wall-breaking is... So good, like Naganadel needs no introduction to wall breaking. It, it just breaks balls because it's it's a Naganadel. Um, that beast boost is deadly. Putting in Chelly Scarf on top of it and getting the special attack boost, oh, you're in for a tough time trying to trying to stop it. 
um, Slurpuff being able to Dynamax and Belly Drum and get the Unburden, very, very hard to stop. Um, and Colossal again with the with this with the steam engine getting plus six speed and getting a weakness policy boost on a dynamo if you if you chose to go the dynamax around colossal in with the weakness policy you can run it special or physical and really just go whichever way you want and really just cause a lot of problems. Um, I think the other and you've got hero in this sizzle. One. Oh yeah, sizzle can and you've got sizzle doing things. scissory things, yeah. Yeah, I'm not a big I've never liked fighting sizzles. Um, unless I've got a, a um, Victini with a V create in the back, but appreciate that we don't have Victinis in this in this draft. Um, but the, I think the other unsung, unsung sorry, the other unsung hero in this team is Pissimian. Because like I mentioned before, you can get access to max knuckles, max air streams, and it potentially could cause a fair few issues. It's got um, Defiant as an ability, so someone tries to bring in a, um, their own Dynamax Pokemon against it and lowers the stat, it's going to get plus two. It's, you know, it's a, um, it's a deceptively... Is it, it's a Pokemon you wouldn't want to sleep on. You wouldn't want to do a bit of homework on it before you really start um, trying to fight it. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I went eight for wall breaking. Um, I went nine. Yeah, there's so many things that... There's just so many things that come in and just click buttons and away they go. I mean, one of the things that stops Sizzle is Queen of Majesty Serena. And he has both. So there you go. Yeah. And, and then that brings me to the Synergy. Yeah, Synergy I gave a nine. Like, I can't pick too many holes in this team, to be honest. It's the kind of team that I draft. It's got lots of my favourite mons. Um, and... You know, Silvali can do what you want it to do. It's literally the Swiss Army knife. So, yeah, I gave yeah. it a nine. How, how do you yeah. feel? Yeah, about the same. Nine, a nine as well. Um, and I think this team, when you when you look at other teams, and when you, when you look at what I've said previously about if can a team um, grind out those wins, those those turn those one point wins into three point wins, and get those get across the line to get those three-point wins and get into the into the finals. I think if the chips are down, this team will get those three-point wins. Like, if Nagano, Del, if Nagano Del, for some reason, goes down early, is a misplay or whatever, there's enough still in the back to just be able to rotate around and just grind out those five, those those three-point wins. You know, I think this is, is a I, genuine thing. And I'll add on that um, I've been watching his uh, YouTube videos on his other draft leagues. And if anyone knows how to use those lower tier mons to their advantage, it's going to be this guy right here. Oh, I'm very excited to see how he uses them in because I, I love using the lower tier Pokemon, though, as you guys both know, with the <laughs> with, our te- with our team drafts. I, I, I've taken the um, the very low tier Pokemon and made, them some, made something very special out of it. So, look, I like, I appreciate when people use low tier Pokemon to the absolute maximum potential. I, I think it's great. Definitely. Just next time... Take me a turn of... Hey? Take me a turn of 40. Use it against me. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, so I gave it a total of 9, 18, 26, 34, 42. So 40, 40 for me? 40 and 42, that's 82. Excellent. Yeah. That brings us to the next team, which is Rebellion, coached by Lucian Flash. And they drafted Celestia, Arcanine, Come Faith, Nino King, Mr. Rhyme, Ordino, Mill Tank, Flygun, Shift Tree, and Volcarona. All right. Um, how do you feel about the bulk? I think the bulk. Oh, sorry. Bulk, I, I asked you, and then I was sort of jumped into it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I, look, I look at the bulk and I go, you know, you got Celestina, which is bulky. Arcanine is, you know, it used to be the premier fire defensive type until Incineroar came along. Now it's happily in second place. You've got um, Ordino and Miltank, which, you know, they do similar things, but Miltank's a little bit um, more useful, I'm going to say. You've got Volcarona, which can be bulky. You can run Flame Body or whatever. 
it's not the bulkiest team ever. There's no, you know, one one that I go, you're really bulky, I'm scared. But overall, uh, you know, I'd be happy with the bulk of I drafted this team and I gave it an eight. Oh, yeah, I would agree, honestly. Um, I think this is just part and parcel of drafts, right? Like, I think they, more and more teams are going towards this more bulky build. Um and whether that's, you know, the teams are a bit more, def- are generally coming out a bit more defensive. There's a bit more of a, they're feeling a bit cagey. They don't, like, especially in this league, there's a lot on the line because it's all on their YouTube, the personal YouTube channel. So they don't want to lose in front of their fans. So maybe the the, bul- the drafting bulky to try and not lose. And maybe they've, there's a, they're playing it, trying, trying to play it safe. Um, but, as it is, this is what we're dealt with. And I don't think it's particularly fair to draft anything really below a seven. And there was so much of what we've seen so far because so much of it is bulky. I would say an eight as yeah. well. Um, but yeah, it's just been, um, it's a bulky team. And I'm sorry, I'm just getting another phone call where I've sort of just, you know, phased off a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, you know, sell seal are bulky. Mr. Rhyme can... Oh, sorry, not Mr. Rhyme. Well, I was thinking Mr. Rhyme with a, with a screen removal, but not actually setting screens. I'm going to sell a um, I think Comfy's can be quite bulky with the Calm Mind if you can get it set up. Arcanine with um, can be bulky, or can be built bulky. Um, access the Morning Sun and it's excellent. Um, and Miltank is, causes, has caused everyone a nightmare at some point. And if you say... If you say it hasn't, then you're lying. I don't care. 100% agree. It's a speedy cow. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> Speaking of speedy cows, how's your speed cows looking? Speedy cows? So I think speedy cows is probably the fastest Pokemon there, and that's probably not a good thing. <laughs> um, fly on, is Flygon faster? I don't think so. I'm pretty sure. If Flygon I've been wrong on a couple speed. of things. They're the same, yeah. The same speed, are they? Yeah. yeah. Wow. There you go. Um, look, I think the speed is not particularly good. I think it can be patched with, like, a choice scarf. Um, but you've got Miltank and Flygon on the same speed. Volcarona can be... Um, can quiver dance. Shiftry can take... If it can get... If you can get the sun up, it can take advantage of it if it's um, chlorophyll ability. But, I mean, the speed isn't particularly fantastic. It's pretty middling. I'd probably um, probably give it a six, honestly. Um, I don't know that I particularly like its speed tier. Yeah, I'm the same. I gave it a seven. If Comfy didn't have triage, I probably would have given it a six as well. But I think that when you're running bulky offense, it's okay to not be speedy, so it's not the worst thing ever. But um, yeah, I, things like Nita can gonna have to be scarfed quite often, or um, maybe you have to run scarf fly on every week, or you know, there's gonna be options like that just to take advantage. You can't just rely on Quiver Dance, Volcarona, or or Totemize Celestia like every week. Yeah. Then again, Ooh. you might, you might. I mean, I'm sure there'll be games where Celestia just runs away with it, and there'll be games where Volcarona just runs away with it. But, you know, if you can suppress those kind of mons, as, a, as, a, as an opponent, I'd look at that team and go, I can build against that team. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't even have a team. So, yeah, I gave it a seven. Look, I was just going to pick up on a point you said just before, like, bulky offense isn't, you don't necessarily need speed. And I would agree. You know, I think it doesn't also translate to, it doesn't translate necessarily, tra- sorry, it doesn't necessarily translate to a, a seven score for me. I think it just, a six is like a scoring a six isn't bad. Like if it's no. not what, if this is not what your team is designed to do, then it's not what it's designed to do. It doesn't look like it's designed to be a particularly quick team. So how does that make you feel about the support options? Um, the support options I think are not too bad. Um, I think again it's. Like I think Comfey and Celestial probably runs 
the show a little bit with the support options. You've got Aromatherapy on, on Comfy. Uh, both Cellar Steeler and Comfy run Leech Seed. Uh, Mr. Ryan has an uh, underrated ability in being able to remove screens. Um, I think Ordino and Miltank both have the ability to, or they both have heal bells. So I think status issues won't be a problem for this team because they've got so many, so many um, Pokemon available to get rid of status. Um, so I think overall, I think it's not too bad. I would probably give it a seven. Yeah, I went the same. I mean, Miltank's a pretty reliable rocker. Slogan can set rocks too if you need it to. And then you've got all the um, stuff that you mentioned. You've got Comfey's aromatherapy if you need insta healing or you can use Ordino and Miltank with their various tricks to do things. But, um, yeah, once again, it's nothing amazing. There's no one amazing support mon that makes me go, yep, you can bring that every week and it can do... Almost the same thing, you know. It's not like a slow bro or something reliable. So I think a seven sphere. And how do you feel about the wall breaking? Kind of on the same track. I just don't see anything that makes me go, "Oh, I'm scared to face this team. It's going to blow me apart." You know, there's nothing that can come in and click buttons <laughs> and immediately suck in kills. Everything needs to set up. Flog on, arguably, you could scarf it or whatever and maybe get a kill but then you know, what are you going to do scarf yourself into earthquake or something and then opposition will send another levitator or something so yeah I mean you could die yeah, everyone, that too that too but I mean you know like Boccarona yeah super scary after equivalence or whatever but I'm sure everyone knows what it does so they can be prepared for it yeah, so well, my, it's yeah, you're right. Most people will predict that Volcarona quiver, will quiver dance. It's like one of those things that just happens. If you have a a yeah. rock type, it's. I mean, if you have a rock type, you might be facing a Giga Drain, so you probably run a Rindo Berry. Though that's the thing with drafts, you have predictable <laughs> Pokemon, and you put the Pokemon out there that's um, going to going to stop those wall breakers, right? So. Your first move is the first move would be um, Volcarona Quiver Dancers, and you're switching into a Rock type, and then they'll try and Giga Drain. But if you've got a Rindo Berry prepared, you're gonna one shot it because Volcarona dies right. to a pebble. Um, <laughs> and I mean, Flygon. I mean, this this is probably um, something else to consider as well is that there's a few different Pokemon in there that have four times weaknesses, and those are the Pokemon you want to be doing the wall breaking. So. You got Flygon there with a four times weakness to ice. You got Shiftry there with a four times weakness to bug, and Volcarona with a four times weakness to rock. And those three types are pretty common. Um, like most water types, or if not all water types, have access to an ice type move. U turns are everywhere, and Vol- and rock types aren't exactly uncommon. Like most Pokemon will, will have a access to a rock slide or a stone edge. Yeah, and that's and also great. like having stealth rocks up. You're going to have to run heavy duty boots every week, and that's really lows, lowers the potential for Volcarona. Yeah, I agree. Um, so and it, feels, it was an easy seven for me. An easy seven. For me. I feel a little bit bad for saying it's a team that has a Volcarona <laughs> in it, but I just I think it's a six. I think there's just not enough. Um, I feel like there's. The wall breakers can be there, but I think there's too many answers to their wall breakers. I think the wall breakers are just not going to be able to do enough of a job to be able to break walls consistently. So I think yeah. uh, I think it's a seven. Yeah, I think the same way it's going to be. I'm going to be seven as well. I just the team. I don't know. I can't put my finger on one thing that will go that will fix this team, but it's not. Well, I mean, it's, it's, right. it's, it's okay. It's almost like a grindy team, and you can't have a grindy team in a 20-minute time draft. No. No, you can't. I mean, Mr. Ryan will have has uh, access to Rapid Spin, so maybe it'll run Heavy Duty Boots and be the Rapid Spin support, and maybe it'll also... Maybe, maybe it'll Dynamax for that special option. I just, I just don't know how this team will 
will generally go. Like, I'm looking forward to seeing how how it does perform and how this coach um, sets up each week because I think it'll be um, they, if they if they're dead certain on this team, I am very interested to see how they how they set up because they, they, I'm keen, I'm always keen to see a funky set. I agree. Um, so I I ended up with a thirty six. Did we talk about synergy? We did. I I thought we did. I thought we did. We talked anyway, about the four time yeah, and stuff. Yeah, for synergy as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I end up with a thirty four. Thirty four. Nice. I think six twelve, six twelve, nineteen, twenty three. 31. Oh, hang on. Let me count this up again. 8 and 6 is 14, plus 7 is 21, plus 6 is 27, plus 6 is 33. Fuck, I'm, I need a calculator. Shit. It's getting a bit late up than my... Uh, uh, was. Your middle is correct. Wrong. That's right. So 33. Uh, 36. All right, 33. 33. 33. Just calculated it. So Normally in bed now. Nice. All right. So that brings us to the Vic- right. the no, very nice Virginia Victinis, coached by Rick and Mike. I like it. It's like Rick and Ralph, but Mike, I get it. It's cool. <laughs> and they drafted. Uh, it's, not, it's not as cool they as um, I was gonna say, it's not as cool as the wiki washy wishy washies. That's wiki washy washy washy. Yeah. Um, Hiramosa, Slowbro Canto, Mandibuzz, Neo Queen, Heracross, Arctazolt, Heliolisk, Aromatis, Duraladon, and Blacephalon. How's your bulk looking there, Jaden? I think this team it's got it has a bit of bulk. Like the the ones that stand out at first glance is Slowbro and Mandibuzz. Like those two are very, very bulky Pokemon. The issue I take with those two Pokemon in the same team, though, is that they're both pretty weak to a Thunderbolt. And look, the Zeus is there. I I do wonder how reliable those answers to those um the sort of Thunderbolts they'll be. Oh, okay. Okay, you know, you've got Neoquin there that's immune to electricity. Your Arctis out there, which can work as a Volt Absorb, can you be a Volt Absorb? Um, I don't think that's the. I don't think it's a very intuitive way to play after Zolt. Um Then you got Duralude on there that's um, got that resistance to um, electric types as well. So if there's answers to the answers, I guess the answers to the bulk. Um, but I think what you want in your bulk is you want Pokemon that are different types to each other and they can actually like work together with each other. Um, you know, I think a better fit, and I don't know if it's still available or not, but it's probably um, if you can get access to um, Tangrowth, I would love to see Tangrowth on this team because that jewel, that jewel would get yeah. really cool. Um, it has been drafted, with, but, um, you know, you can, always, you can always put up a trade offer. Sorry? It has been drafted, but you can always put up a trade offer. Yeah, it could do. Um, but the only issue with, drop, with dropping Mandibars is it, this will probably become more relevant for support, is that it looks to be the only defog option in this team, and I think this team really needs that defog option. Um, but full I bulk, I gave, it, I gave it an 8. I think it's not bad. It's pre- I was pretty good, actually, uh, with Slowbro Mandibars, and there's options to the, the, the clear weakness to electricity. Um, and then... <laughs> Yeah, there's not much else to say about it outside that. Um, Drew Little, not too bad. Yeah, I also gave an eight. Um, there are a few glass cannons in there, but it's either glass cannon or bulky, so nothing wrong with that, you know? Mm. And how do you feel about speed? Well, you know, you've got two of the fastest mons in the game and, like, Firamosa and Persephone. Well, Firamosa anyway. Um, everything else is middling. But uh, I think if you can somehow get Slush Rush happening and Hupters up flying around and that sort of thing, then there's no reason why it's, it can't compete with speed. But uh, I, had, I I could only... Yeah, I gave it an eight. 
it's you know fear is so fast I couldn't give it less. Yeah, look, I would agree with that. Arca Zoltan, sorry, not Arca Zoltan. I had Arca Zoltan on the brain because I wanted to make a point about it not being a hail center, um, which would help that Arca out a lot. Um, because as it is, it's going to be the only, it might have to set, set its own hail. Um, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just, it's just the, the reality of having the team that he's drafted is just, is not drafted a hail setter. But Pheromos and the Cephalon by themselves are very quick. If you slap a Scarf on the Cephalon and you go to Beast Boost on a special attack, you're in for a bad time. Well, their opponents are in for a bad time. Um, so I think overall, it's a very fast team. I think an eight is fair. But also, actually, one more point I wanted to make as well. That Heracross will be quite um, strong on that on the Dynamax with the um, Aerial Aces. The max air streams. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you can't really uh, count out here across whether it's guts <laughs> or moxie or whatever. Yeah, could be yeah. in trouble. Could be even mu- very much in trouble. So, how do you feel about this support overall? Um, I think the support is where this team sort of lacks a little bit. Um, I think, like I said, sort of said before, um, you've got one option for Defog, which is Mandibuzz. And Mandibuzz is a fantastic Pokemon. That cannot be understated. I do wonder, though, how he will manage the, um, the Stealth Rock options that the opponents have. Because but, um, you've got Pheromosa that's weak, that doesn't want Rocks if it's running Focus Sash. You've got Blacephalon that doesn't want Rocks, especially, if you're, again, if you're running Focus Sash. Um, even outside of having focus, actually, they don't particularly want to be taking that chip damage. Um, you got Arcazole, which is weak to rock. Um, and I mean, Heracross probably doesn't want to take a focus that let's take a stealth rock either, but it's just maybe it takes it better than Pheromosa. Um, I think just a bit, <laughs> it just I feel like there's support options there, but they're just potentially not quite enough support options for the, all that, all his team. Um, yeah, you feel bad saying it in a team that has Mandibuzz and Slowbro, but, you know, it's not... If you're relying on Aromatisse to do to do things every week, then that's probably telling you there's a problem. Yeah. I mean, the, you only, you are limited to... You're limiting them to 10 Pokemon, so it is, you can't have everything. But I feel like exactly. potentially... But they could have another... A rapid spinner, um, in particular. Um, I think running defog, you and getting another defog is probably going to be a bit of an issue because most defoggers are flying types. Um, so getting, I think getting another rapid spinner in would be fantastic to try and keep Pheromosa and Glossephalon healthy, um, especially if you want to run Focus Sash. Um, yeah, and I mean, a Tissy can. Has good options for uh, wish support, I guess, as well. But um, I mean, it's, it's bulky and it can run wish support options well. Um, is it better than other fairy types? Are uh, better than other wish support options? Um, in the in its tier tier three, probably not. Probably actually not too bad an option, honestly, in my opinion. Um, no, it's not. It's a good. It's a good one. I'm just you know, we have to bring it every week. If you're going to have to bring it every week, that's probably not a good sign. But yeah, we'll see. I gave a seven for support. I was a bit, I was a bit more harsh, and I think it's mostly because of the electric weakness. Um, and it's a six, six from me, dog. All right. <laughs> so on, on to the wall breaking then. I think this this team has great wall breaking potential. Um, your Pheromosa, your Blacephalon, and you got any number of Dynamax Pokemon in between. And I think that's... I think they've got a really, really good mix of potential wall breakers because yeah. Theramos can be run physically or special um, and Blacephalon is an excellent special attacker. Um, so I think it's a... Um, I think they've got excellent wall breakers. I gave it an 8. Yeah, I went with an 8 as well. I think this team is pretty good. You can run one of the 
Um, you can lead one of your uh, ultra beasts and then sweep with the other. And as you say, just punch a few holes in the middle with the max mons. So, yeah, it's actually one of the strengths of the team is the diversity as far as attacking options are concerned. Yeah. I mean, even Duraladon um, could have its moments in the sun if you need it. Absolutely. Depending on who you're up against, I think a good positive, um, a good positive steel type could be excellent. So what would you give it? All right. Wall breaking. Uh, wall breaking, I gave an eight. No, same as me. And then in synergy, I also gave an eight. I just think the team goes quite well together. Um, it was more the fact that, as you say, the defensive mons are both electric weak, and there's a, quite a few stuff rock weaknesses, and the fact that there's not really any hail support for Arc Result um, makes it slightly redundant, especially with the hero just next to it. So I couldn't give it any higher than an eight. Yeah. Uh, I just realised I misspoke earlier. I gave um, a six for support when I, I cited the electric weaknesses, which is not a support category. What I was meant to say was I gave it a, I gave support a six because of the rock weak. Um, that, that stealth rock weakness for me is a bit too much. Um, I gave it a seven because of its electric weakness. <laughs> um, yes, there's options to to um, absorb those electric attacks. I just don't. It, it just invites too much pressure. Um, and you're forcing yourself into Pokemon that you might not necessarily want to be in against. Um, electric versus electric is not exactly an efficient way of dealing with your opponent. Um, I mean, after Zolt getting access to Stomping Tantrum could be good as well. So, look, it, it depends on. It does depend a lot on who you're facing and what they've got, at, or what, what they've got in the back as well. So, I think overall, it's a good team, um, and it can't be. Understated that Pheromos and Blissephon will be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of like jagging kills. Um, I think, like you said, the strategy quite clearly, if, as far as I'm concerned, as, well, as you said, is lead one Ultra Beast. Um, once that goes down, bring out your Dynamax Pokemon, take as many down as you can, and then clean up the rest with the last Ultra Beast. It's a uh, it's, the beauty is in its simplicity. Like, it's a very simple strategy, and it'll work That's most, right. most weeks. I'm going to work. Yeah, exactly right. <clears throat> I gave it a 41 overall. Um, I was gas bagged, so I haven't added mine up yet. So, 8, 16, 24, 31, and 37. 37. What did you give it? 41. 41. 41 is 79. And that moves us on to our penultimate team, which are the Battlefield Torracats, coached by TD, a.k.a. VA Pressure. All right. Well, they've got A Slash, Hydreigon, uh, Unovan Dumb Manitan, Galarian Weezing, Hitmon Lee, Sceptile, Orbeetle, Agron, Jolteon, and Seismitoad. Yeah, just... <laughs> What a, the bulk is just, I'm going to say it's almost non existent. I mean, Agron's bulky due to its typing, and you know, it's high defense, but it's especially weak and four times weaker of ground. Um, Orbital can set up screens, apart from that, it's not too bulky. Weezing, same again, can be bulky, but it's not going to carry a team. So, as far as bulk is concerned, I'm like, this team's a little bit lacking in that respect, so I gave it a seven. I actually thought that it was not too bad. Um, I actually gave it a seven as well, but I feel like that's um, it's going to be a bit of a sort of an inconsistent um, comments, I think. I think you're saying it's not too bad, but I think it's actually pretty good, but I still give it a seven because Aggie Slash has got pretty good defences when it's in shield form, and it can also... Once it's um, if it uses King Shield and gets that and gets the effect off, it'll lower the opponent's attack. Um, Hydreigon's not that bad, if, um, bulk wise either. Um, Galarian Weezing has access to Will O Wisp and has pretty high defense. All Beetles are actually deceptively bulky. I mean, not 
we all know that Vigavolt is the best bug. It just has a running joke on our end. Um, Vigavolt is best bug for sure, yeah. Vigavolt, best bug. But Crustle is the goat. Best bug. Crustle is the goat. <laughs> Lasagna crab for the win. Lasagna crab for the win. Um, anyway. <laughs> anyway, size and is pretty good in bulk. Um, I think Joe is actually probably the resident expert on seismitoad, so he can probably make a comment on seismitoad's ability here. It is the best fucking Pokemon you could pick up in draft. <laughs> wow, big cool. You, you big gotta, cool. Um, you, you gotta love huh? a bulky water type that's kind of fast, gets speed boosted by uh, by, um, uh, with by its ability with the uh, Swift Swim. And then it also has water absorbed, so it could just soak up hits, literally. Uh, there's that's, so that's much pretty, that can do. And it's it actually has, pretty good. What tier is it in? Is it still tier 3? Was it it's, it's off tier into... 2 in singles, because it, it has so many physical options, as well as special options. There's just so much that can do, and it's so worth the pick. Oh, well, and it's obviously been obviously this guy's seen it as well because he's obviously picked it and he's just his wild card. So, um, look, I'm, I'm excited to see how we go to the seismitoad, and he's got options there to um, you know, help protect it too. He's got um, Galarian Weezing, which can take a grass hit, and same with um, Darmanitan U, although acknowledging that you know, even Darmanitan doesn't really want to take many hits at all. Um, they also got All Beetle there, which can take a grass hit and recover that off. Um, but yeah, bulk, I'd say seven, but I think, honestly, it's actually pretty good. Not non-existent, so maybe we've got a different metric, Stuart. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I know you say, I guess that's bulky, but like, you want it to do, you want it to be offensive, generally, you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, oh, you don't want to be bulky for the sake of being bulky. <laughs> So how do you feel about the speed tiers? Um, well, he's got two Pokemon that are got Unburden, Hitmonlee and Sceptile. He's got Jolteon with access to Quick Feet, which is actually not a bad. I'm actually going to like Quick Feet and Flame Orb combination. Um, I actually quite like that as a as a thing. It makes you the fastest thing on the field. Um, I think Egg Slash gets access to Shadow Sneak, so good options for priority. Diamantan. With the um, with you know, naturally goes with the scarf. High dragon can naturally go with the scarf. So pretty good speed tiers, I would say. I'd probably give it um, an eight. And it's honestly helped by all beetle too. So all beetle with the um, sticky webs can't really go too much slower than eight. I thought that I would have thought. Yeah, I was going to say sticky webs is what made me consider it a nine. You've got t- the two unburdened users are just crazy. Except I'll pass anyway. Um, Jolteon, as you said, Dominantan is quite fast. Hydreigon is quite fast. Good. Really good. It's just a shame that Titan Toad can't set its own, its own reign. Yeah, um, I, don't think, I think it's probably there yeah, is a war of the door. Maybe a war of the but more than a soft door. It, it can set up its own reign with Rainy Day. Unless it matches, of course. I've done it. Uh, well, of course, it can, it can manually run Rain Dance, but. Uh, I feel like that's a bit of a a bit of a wasted slot, but to each their own. This could, it could work, so we'll see, it remains to be seen. Um, in terms of support, though, how are you feeling? I'm thinking it's not too bad. Yeah, I'm looking at support, and I'm going. You know, there are definitely better teams for support out there, but between all beetle and wheezing, and yeah, even size Batari, you've got a few options there. So I settled on a seven for support. I would agree. I would agree with seven. Uh, but the only thing I would mention that you haven't is I think Agron is actually deceptively... You wouldn't want to sleep on Agron. Um, I have run sets and I've had sets run against me with... Um, a metal burst and, st- and sturdy um, combination. So, if you've got a, if you're up against a Dynamax Pokemon and you're on the ropes, you bring Agron in and you trigger that 
sturdy ability. You would get one shot, otherwise get one shot. And you click Metal Burst, it does one and a half times damage back and it effectively wipes out what's in front of you. Um, yeah. if you. If you combine it with Cust that Berry and Endeavor, you've suddenly brought down two Pokemon in, in two moves. It's, it's, in, it's insane. Um, so I think Agron is the, um, the sleep region here. You don't really want to sleep on it. Um, it would be interesting to see how Agron gets used, if at all. Um, but that is also yep. another option for it. And I think that I think that's I'd put that more in the support category than the wall breaking because you're not actually clicking a button to bust open walls. You're actually supporting your team by preventing wall breakers on your own getting well, their wall breakers breaking you down. I think it provides excellent support. But it can still do wall breaking, which is our next category, of course. Mm. And I feel like. The wall breaking is pretty good for this team. Once again, things that can come in and click buttons, Aegislash, Hydreigon, Darmanitan, even Hitmonlee, they can all come in and click buttons. Jolteon's quite strong with a choice specs and that kind of thing. So there are definitely wall breaking options there. How do you feel? Yeah, I think all of the above. It's nothing really more to add. The wall breaking is quite strong. How did you score it? Uh, where are we? We're breaking. I settled on a nine. I went with an eight. Um, maybe I'm a bit tired and cranky, but <laughs> um, maybe another day we'll give it <laughs> no, a I nine. Think I think it's I just like, like the, the variety, I guess, is what puts it up a point for me. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think there's some. I think there's great options. Like I think um, there's not much in it. I think there's a lot going for it. It's got good um, pivot options as well. As well. I think that's more about synergy. <laughs> um, I think probably I would like to see um, Pelipper in this team. So that way both Cyclone Toad and Jolteon can take advantage of the rain. Um, Jolteon having access to Weather Ball reliably as well as Thunder. You know, I think that would go a long way to actually providing more ball-breaking potential for it and Cyclone Toad being able to outspeed more things and, uh, and attack with more ferocity um, with the water attacks. Just having some access to reliable rain. Yeah, that's right. Um, and for synergy, how do you feel? I'm thinking it's not actually. It's actually a pretty good team overall. Yeah, I was really happy with the cause. I ended up on a nine again for synergy, just because it fits really well together. There's no glaring weakness. I mean, there's obviously a few ground weaknesses there, but you've got Mons like Seismitoad, Orbeetle, um, Sceptile, uh, Hydreigon is immune, Weezing can be immune, so you know, it's not horrendous. Mm. I think something that we sort of haven't really touched on though is the, is the is how easy it is for this team to um, pop the also to get the Unburdened Boost. Because all it would take hmm. is Galarian Weezing to run Misty Terrain and then bringing in him yep. on Leap Sceptile with Misty Seed. Like, it's that kind of synergy that I think is, is so important. True, true. It's, it's, a re- it's a really good spot. It's a really good spot. Um, like, being able to. You know, especially on Hitmonlee. Like, Hitmonlee as a Dynamax Pokemon is fantastic, but being able to reliably set up with its unburden, it can be a problem sometimes. So being able to bring in Hitmonlee on in the Misty Terrain and then be immediately popping that, um, immediately popping the unburden boost, getting a special defense boost, and then being able to Dynamax immediately afterwards and, and really boost those attacks, it's, abs- it's absolutely phenomenal. So, yeah, I, I'd give it a 9 too. Awesome. So overall, that gives us a 41. It gives me a 41. Three nines and two sevens, I do believe. Nine, seventeen, twenty-four, thirty-two, thirty-nine. Yeah, I would call this team to hit the forties from me, but thirty-nine plus forty-one is eighty. Eighty. It's an easy one, Joe. <laughs> we take those. <laughs> now, lucky last, we have the Arizona Cardinals. 
coached by Orazan, and they drafted Blaziken, Cle- Blaziken, Clefable, Porygon 2, Stami, Roton Mo, Golurk, Gazlord, Pinsir, Dragalgy, and Corviknight. Gee, what a bulky team. What a bulky team. I immediately you just look at the bulk and like, that's what you're drawn to in this team. Um, I'm not too interested in Blaziken. Um, I think, I really think that Blaziken's just a one, sort of a one-trick pony. It's sort of hard to, uh, it's hard to get excited by Blaziken in Tier 1. I think there's something, there's so many more exciting options in Tier 1. Uh, I feel like Blaziken's kind of, if you if we had like a, <laughs> a overused and underused tiers, we'd, he'd be in that underused borderline. Like, it's just sort of like, yeah, he's probably too good for tier two, but really, he's not that great in tier one anymore. Um, mm-hmm. But in saying that, we'll start with the bulk, and I think I think it's important to start with the bulk because Clefay will pour on two and Corviknight, crazy strong, crazy bulk. Um, helped more by Rotom Mo's ability to burn things, and and um, Dragology is pretty. It's pretty bulky too. Um, what are your thoughts? Mate, honestly, I gave this a 10. I gave this a 10 for bulk. Holy shit. Um, Wait, did I, did I hear that correctly? A 10? Yeah. A 10 from this the is my, this, is, this is my favourite bulky team. Um, Clefable, Porygon, Corviknight, and then the other ones that you mentioned that can be bulky. Mate, I, I would love, I would, I would draft this team. I would draft it. Maybe not Blaziken, as you said, but as far as the bulk's concerned, this has Stuart written all over it. All right. Um, they get, they get... gave us a 9, but I'm tempted to go 10 just because you did. Arizona Chargers. <laughs> they gave... hey, t- they get the first 10. Don't they take... get the first 10. Don't take that lightly. He never gives a 10. He said no team is perfect, and you just got a 10 from Stuart. So, uh... Oh. You better be in the finals this season. <laughs> if you if you don't win, you, 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 um, yeah, no, no good. It's not good if you don't win. My proviso is huh? that that the proviso is that because of the if, if this was a showdown league, completely different. It would easily be a ten. The problem is that will it win them games? I don't know. The ball probably won't win them games, but it's bulky. I like it. It gets a ten. I like it. I am going to give it a nine, and then. Well, it, well, that was because of that point that you just raised is because I don't know necessarily that the Corviknight Clefable Porygon 2 core will be able to turn the... like You'll be able to outstall teams, no problem. That's, that's, not the, that's not the concern at all. My concern is, will you be able to get those one-point victories to so three-point victories? And looking at... Even so much looking at is the... Um, <clears throat> looking at the wall break is even a little bit... You're not really getting too much out of them. It's just it's just those those they, that bulk will hold that team together, and it'll stay held. It'll stay held because you can't break it down with poison types with with, with toxic spikes because you got Dragalgy there. You can't break it down with um, even they do get toxic. Clefable's there with the heal bell. Um, so you've got like think... you know you've got re- reliable rapid spin. You've got reliable. Defog, out the wazoo, you've got everything. You've got everything. You've got everything. Um, my only concern is that the that is it too bulky to actually win games. So that's why it's not a ten for me. It's a nine. That's fair enough. Um, All right. So how do you feel about the speed? I think the speed is okay. Like, you've got fast Pokemon. Blaziken is fast. Um, has to be on the proviso that you run Protect. You have to get that speed boost first before it becomes speedy, which is a little bit of, Which is why I don't get excited by Blaziken, because so many people love Blaziken, and I've never quite really understood why. It's, it, it's got a good hidden ability in, in speed boost. Um... But it takes, in my opinion, it takes too much time to set up. It takes too many slots to set up, and it's just by the time it is set up, that you someone's already. It's a combination of 
it's a combination of speed boost plus it can be physical or special. I think that's a, a positive. Mm. I'll take that point. But yes. I just, um, you're right, it probably it's, needs to run protects unless it, unless it gets unlucky. Yeah, well, unless you're bringing it in on something that's weak against or you get a favourable um, or you get a favourable lead, you can probably um, <laughs> probably get away without protect, but I don't know. I just don't get excited by Blaze again. Um, but it is fast, and I'll, and I'll concede that point. Um, Starmie is pretty quick, I, I believe. Um, I've been wrong a couple of times tonight, so yep. I'm pretty sure it's... I think it's 115 without, without... 105? I thought it was 115. I thought it was faster. You know, it is, it is 115, 100. you're right. 15, yeah. I was, I was pretty sure it was quick, though. Um, Rota Mo can run Choice Scarf and can also run Trick, so can you know lose the scarf if it needs to. Um Dragalgy good and good for trick room if you're in that position. Same with Golik. Um I mean you probably always want to be in trick room because you got those very slow um Pokemon that are able to do a lot of quite a lot of damage. So this is one of those things that might even favour the trick room. Um yeah. I mean I'm a little bit of P to the basement here. There's a little Sorry. bit of um I said it for me. It's a little bit of a penthouse to the basement situation where um, I went from a ten for bulk to only a seven for speed. But that's as you say on the proviso that I genuinely believe there is a trick option on this team, and it's on purpose. Like yeah. I don't think you pick Trigalgy and Guzzlord. You don't pick Trigalgy and Guzzlord and Golurk unless you anticipate trick room coming. Sometimes you only bring it every week, but. I definitely think it's a legitimate option and has probably been carefully considered. Or I'm giving them too much credit. I don't know. I don't know them at all. So if you did it on purpose, well done. If you did it by mistake, well done. So the option's yeah. there. The options the, That's right. has been, the draft is locked in, so the option is there. <laughs> so um, I mean, the Porygon two and Starmie can both run Trick Room. So I mean, you'd be wanting to run it on Porygon and then teleporting out. Um, yep. Just to get that safe switch. Or, in. Yeah, or you run analytic Porygon, Trick Room, and then kill everything. Well, yeah, there's always that too. Or download or whatever. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I feel like once you get to that point, though, Porygon too is starting to suffer from four moves syndrome because you don't want um, teleport, um, Trick Room, Tri Attack, Recover, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Shadow True. Ball. Like you want, you want all those things. Yeah. So um, how do you feel about support? Um, I actually didn't give my score on speed. I think for speed, it's uh, I agree with you. Oh, it's a seven. Sorry, That's my right. bad. And support, and support, I would also. Sorry, I wouldn't give it a seven. I'd probably give it an eight. Um, a favor with stealth rocks, being able to wish protect, being able to wish support other team, other members of the team, heal bell. It Clefable's a one stop shop for support. Um, and it just has such great um, uh, move. Like Pokemon, Mon compression, like it, it can fit so many roles in just one Pokemon, which is fantastic. Um, Porygon two, Trick Room options, um, which is good. Being able to switch into attacks is excellent. Being able to teleport out of a bad, but like being able to teleport out and safely bring in uh, another Pokemon, it's um, that's really great support. Corviknight's Defog, uh, being able to pro- again provide more Stealth Rock support. If um if it goes off the field, fantastic. Run a mo, thunder wave, uh, will o wisp, excellent. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I gave it a nine for support. Between Clefable and Pro Run, you've already got heaps, and then you got Rotomo with the things it can do. Um, you got enough stealth rock setters. You got toxic spikes. Corviknight can defog reliably. Um, yeah, great. That's another positive part of the team for sure. Yep, agreed. Um, I gave, yeah, so support, I gave an eight. How'd you go? Support, I gave it a nine. Nine, fantastic. Look at you go, man. You're outscoring me. Wall breaking. Wall breaking. Wall breaking. How do we go with wall breaking? Well, once again, this is where it falls down a little bit because some of the heavy hitters, like God's Lord, don't get me wrong, heavy hitter, but you need trick room. For Galgi. Huge special attack, too slow, needs trick room. Um, Clefable, 
needs a few stored powers, uh, a few cosmic powers to get its stored power boost up, etc. Blazer can yeah, can hit hard on both sides, but as you say, it has to run protect usually unless there's a plan to get it in um, to get the speed boost off for free. Um, other than that, unless you're running spec army or something, I don't see a lot. What about pencil? What do you think? Yeah, pencil once again. I mean, I wouldn't call it a wall breaker. So it gets access to um, Moxie though. Yeah, but I don't think it's I don't think it's fast enough to warrant too much stress for an opponent. Yeah, well, yeah so it doesn't... eighty-five speed. Yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> it would be a lot better if it had access to a flying type move. I would think. Um, if it had access to a flying type move, it would be a genuine threat to um, to anybody. I think as they say. Um, Especially like getting a free stat boost in the max air stream, and also getting a, the attack boost on Moxie. I think that would be, would be make it crazy strong. Um, but as it is, it's got sort of stuck at that eighty five. So you, you'd want to run it jolly to get the max, get the bonus, to get the best out of it, the most amount of speed out of it, and you probably want to scarf it. So, I, for me, I think it's this tends. Um, you look at the team at face value and think, okay, this team doesn't really have a lot of wall breakers, but then you sort of like pick it apart a little bit more and you sort of start to see where where the wall breakers are. They just need a bit of help getting in. So I think it's not fatal. I think you probably just need a, to probably needs a bit of a think about how well, it'll take a lot of preparation. It'll need a bit of a bit of a think about how you're gonna bring him next week. But overall it sound, it sounds like you gave it a seven, Jaden. Yeah, seven. Let's go. Yeah, seven. Yeah, but yeah, I I it's good. <laughs> sort of can't, yeah, coming off mid driver, yeah, it's seven. <laughs> All right, so now we're up to the final category synergy. Synergy, um, how do you feel about the synergy of this team? I gave it a seven, too, and I think, and this ties in a lot with what I was saying about wall breaking. It just needs a bit of help, it needs a bit more help in getting things going. Um, pouring on two, I think we'll definitely get a we'll get at least one trick room in. Um, we'll get more than one in, maybe, because if you're going to teleport out, it's going to be taking two free hits, and no one, no Pokemon likes that. Um, so it's, it's sort of, it's good. I think it could be better. Yeah, I agree. I um, I gave a seven as well. It's cores are good. They do various things, but it's the Attack versus defense. Like I gave it a perfect score for bulk, but that doesn't mean by any means it's a perfect team. So I yep. think seven is a fair rep- representation of the synergy. Yeah, I think the synergy between the Clefable Pori until a Cold Knight is fantastic. Don't get me wrong; like it would be so hard to break them down. Um, but I think just there's the looking outside of those three, there's just not much. I, in my opinion, I just don't think there's enough there to that puts together a good team, in my opinion. Yeah, totally agree with that. All right, and we come to 38 for me. I give, I give it a 40, but don't forget, it includes a 10. So I expect so big things. 30, yep. 40 to 70. 78. And that is all the teams. Uh, for the breakdown, uh, we did have one team swap, um, uh, the Riddle Goons, and that dropped, and uh, Misery Gear took over. Uh, we'll probably try to recap that later, but uh, as for now, we have our team rankings, and uh, I thank you guys for being analysts for this video and the video before. Any final takes? Uh, no, it was just I'm, I'm looking forward to watching a few games, you know, because last season I didn't really get a chance to, but this season I should hopefully be able to get to watch a few games. And um, yeah, it's, fo- follow all the coaches, basically. Yeah, follow the coaches. Coach it goes for you guys. Make sure you follow all the coaches. Yep, Joe, you'll put a link to all the coaches in the um in the descriptions. I'm sure. 
So, so yeah, yeah, go into the coaches links will be in the description for the first episode and this episode. So be sure to uh, check out that and uh, follow all the all the coaches because everyone has some fire teams and also has great uh, competitive content in other draft leagues as well as CML. I think the oh, only John, I noticed that you were you were really excited to pick up Incineroar as soon as it was dropped. Oh yeah, definitely. I feel like he was a better <laughs> fire type than Magma. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> Alrighty, thanks guys. Thank you. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.